Hey everyone, it's Sean with Lara Photography here with another How I Shot It and Edited It video. So this particular photo uh, I shot a little over a year ago and it's actually gotten a lot of positive uh, feedback and interest over, over the past year so I figured why not it's time to do a How I Shot It video on this. So in this case got a bunch of the groomsmen together uh, which was a challenge in itself because they were all very uh, well, well inebriated. They were. Uh, this was towards the end of the night, right before I left, actually. And uh, getting them all to cooperate was very difficult. But hey, we got it. And once I showed them this photo, it was great because they all wanted their each individual, uh, their own individual cigar shots, um, which is a great way, actually, not only to you know make everyone happy, but hey, potential clients maybe in the future. So anyway, just kind of want to walk through how I shot this. Um, so before I really get into this specific photo, one thing that you need to know before um, you attempt a, a photo like this, whether you know it's illuminating cigar smoke or you're shooting when it's raining or when there's snow or some other form of stimuli in the air, um, you need to have two light sources. You need to have at least one as your backlight. Um, that's what's actually going to illuminate the stuff in the air and again in this case smoke. And you also need a main light or a front light, which is going to light up your subject. Alternatively, uh, you could just use one light um, as a backlight and do kind of like a silhouetted style photo, which I've done multiple times. But in this case, I really wanted to highlight the groomsmen and, and show, you know, show them, show them off a little bit. So I have a di lighting diagram right here. I'm just going to pull it up. Really simple one. We have three lights actually for this particular shot. We have our uh, our main light, uh, our two main lights at camera ni or at nine o'clock and three o'clock. Um, yeah, um, and these are both Godox 8200s modified with a single mag grid. And the reason why I use the mag grid is because I wanted to uh, reduce the spill of light that hit the ground. Uh, basically, I wanted the light only to hit the groomsmen here. If I shot this without the mag grid. I wouldn't get this uh, this desired effect or this result because the light would just spill everywhere. And I'm really just trying to pinpoint and be very specific with where I place my light. So light camera left, camera right, lighting up the groomsmen. I do have another light behind them, as you can see, and this is what's this is my backlight. This is what's illuminating the smoke. In this particular case, I modified it with uh, three magma modifiers. I used a magrid first to help control the spill of light a little bit. Uh, I use a mag sphere just to help diffuse it as well, make it so it's not so harsh on the uh, on the smoke. And then I also, as you can probably guess by now, use a red mag gel to create that nice red smoke. So that was my lighting setup. Now I get a lot of people who ask me, "Hey, you know, what are, what were your settings for this? You know, what were your settings?" And one thing I try to encourage people is to try not to focus so much on what ca your camera settings are. Instead, try to, try to picture how you want your photo to look and how you want your light to work for you. So in this case, I know that I wanted to bring in absolutely no ambient light. So I wanted to be complete in control of my own light and therefore essentially kill all my ambient light. So with this in mind, I set my flash set my exposure in camera to a point where I knew that I wouldn't be bringing in any light and just to completely black out everything. From there, I adjusted my flash settings and used the appropriate amount of light. So in this particular situation though, um, I did shoot this at 1 200th of a second, f5.6 and ISO 800. Now at these settings in the middle of the night, um, I knew that I wouldn't bring in any ambient light, I'd be cutting it all out. So that's kind of why I shot there. That's why I started with it with there. I don't really remember why I was shooting at 800 in retrospect. I probably could have um, shot a little bit lower, but I think my reasoning at the time was I wanted a little bit of um, wanted a little bit of a, a wider aperture so I can get more uh, more of the groomsmen in focus, and I wouldn't have to worry about um, any anyone being soft. I think that's why I did that, and I compensated with my aperture um, as a result. So anyway, I'm going to show you how I edited this. So um, one thing I've already done is applied my import preset, as you can see right here. Um, this is something that automatically gets imported onto every single photo. 
Um, and I will actually have this available for you guys to try out um, probably in the next month or so. So um, what I'm going to first do um, after I imported that automatically is I'm going to increase my exposure because that's kind of the, uh, the main thing I need to do here. As you can see, it's a little under. Perfect. So that's actually already looking really close to the final product. Um, this import preset I have is amazing. It really cuts out the amount of work I have to put in. Um, let's actually go ahead and crop this down just to kind of get it as close to the final image as I can. And as you can see, I did shoot this from kind of a low perspective um, just because I thought it'd be a little bit more interesting than shooting at eye level. Um, I'm going to increase the clarity quite a bit it, it's going to help make the smoke pop. It's going to help give them a little bit more uh, dimension. Just going to make it, just kind of make it more of a punchy photo. And um, honestly, that's pretty much it. That's that's really how simple it was. The, you know, the big thing with this photo was actually just um, getting it right, perfect off the camera as I could. Um, if I really wanted to, you know, I could come in here and like clean up some of these shadows a little bit. I could add some. You know, add some more shadows, but then I start losing a little bit of detail, getting some noise in the black, so I don't really want to do that. But if I was really picky, I was entering this in a competition or something, I could, you know, use my adjustment brush and, uh, you know, maybe paint some more detail onto the side of this guy's face. But honestly, I kind of like the, uh, kind of like how it looks right here. I like this, this uh, you know, this kind of moody effect on some of these guys. And, um, I'm a little bummed, at, when I originally was a little bummed I couldn't see this guy, but after looking at the image, um, I kind of like it. It gives it a little bit of a mysterious vibe to it. Um, and other than that, I might just actually bring down the highlights a little bit, because some of the uh, skin tones are a little blown out. But other than that, um, that's pretty much it. Let's see how close I got to the uh, my original edit. Yeah, pretty uh, pretty damn close. Pretty much the same photo. So. Well, that's how I shot and edited it. If you guys have any questions on um, the editing techniques I used here or any of my other photos, please feel free to hit me up. My email is sean at seanlara.com. I hope you guys have a great evening, and we'll catch you soon. Hey, everyone. If you guys are still here, I just want to mention one more important thing to you all. Next year, in April of 2021, we are hosting a three-day, all-inclusive, exclusive, wedding photography workshop. We're calling this our wedding photography boot camp because it's intense. In these three days, you're gonna learn a ton of stuff. You're gonna learn a lot about off-camera lighting. You're gonna learn about how to be a successful and creative wedding photographer. And we're also dedicating one out of the three days specifically to the business side of things. So if you've been struggling creatively or um, struggling to try to find more clients, we're going to be go going over all of that in this workshop. You can pre-register right now at seanlara.com workshop, and you'll be the first to get notified when the registration goes live. I really hope to see you there. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Thanks again for tuning in, everyone.